All right, you guys, this is being recorded. One thing I say at the beginning of all these webinars, if you're new to this particular strategy and or new to options, watch this again relatively soon after we try and get these out to you uh, within uh, a few hours anyway. It takes a little while to compress it and turn it around and get it out to you guys, but watch it again because some of the nuances will then stick in your brain longer if you wait a month down the road, it is going to be like learning it all over again, okay? So, uh, and if you're thinking of a question, you might miss something and you'll catch that on the back end watching it again. So I implore you guys to watch it again. Uh, and, and that goes for like reading a book. When you read a book, you notice some of those nuances the second time you've read it through. So it's the same thing with this. Um, and this is still continuing on options for intermediates too. So this is a little bit more advanced than what we were doing uh, previously in intermediates one and we're continuing to build on the difficulty of setting up these strategies and uh, the risk parameters so I'm trying to expand on that as we go along and weigh those uh, different things in order to come up with a good structure for this class anyway let me get a couple of things out of the way real quick my name is Eric Wilkinson some of you guys may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC Fox Business or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I actually started trading in college with a psychology degree and uh, decided that I wanted to switch it over to finance. After graduating college, I moved up to the Chicago Board of Trade and I was like one of these little runners over here in the corner and uh, did that for a few months, sold all my stocks that I had and bought myself a badge. Started, I jumped in the pits and started trading ever since. So uh, actually, I started trading college, but I've been trading my own money ever since basically college. Uh, this disclaimer basically says anything I talk about in these webinars should be constituted as general commentary, not investment advice, you guys. I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolio. So what I'm talking about could be counterintuitive to what you are, are doing. OK, and that has to do with the stocks or the underlying, you guys. Um, and at the end of the day, past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog or you can follow our parent company at ProTraderStrat. Uh, you can get all kinds of uh, trading uh, wisdom out of ProTrader strategies more than me. You get more snark and and trading stuff. But uh, I also throw out all my throw out my earnings trades on Twitter because uh, my daily market commentaries I run in the morning where I go over all the um, data and the stocks and stuff like that, that I'm trading, getting in and get out. But at the end of the day is when I put in the earnings trade. So I can't really do that in the daily market commentary and get it out to you guys fast enough. All right. This is going to be on the short call butterfly. Short call butterfly is a really uh, it's not one of my favorites. Let me get that straight because it's it's rather difficult to have all the stars line for this strategy to work out with my rules. There are some other if this strategy doesn't work out for the particular underlying you're looking at, there are other strategies for the environment that we're going to be in, just as there is with any of the other ones. Um, but uh, I'll talk about that coming up. But this is the short call butterfly. Great for unexpected large move. If you're expecting a big move, this is when you want to put this on. Like I said, the market assumption is the market movement is going to be outside the wings. Now, remember what we used to call these are the wings, the short uh, in the money call and the short out of the money call. And the reason why we used to call it the wings is let me pull up a uh, little pin here because the base is two like this. You got two stocks right here or two options, I should say. And then you got one uh, higher and one lower. So that's what makes it a butterfly. It's not a very good butterfly, but you get the concept, right? Where you got one down here, one up here, two in the middle for the base. The ones are the, these are the wings. Okay. That's what we talk about when we're saying the wings. So we want the market to move outside of our in the money call or outside of our out of the money or move our out of the money calls to in the money. So, uh, that's what we would want to happen for this strategy to, really work out well. It'll work out well otherwise, but that's the best case scenario, let's say. All right, 
couple of things when we go through this, we always have our keys to success. We need to go through these next uh, five in order to set up this strategy. If they don't work out, then we got to kind of think about something else to put in place of this strategy for that outpaced market move that we're looking for. We're looking for a big move in the market and there's a, quite a few strategies that can take advantage of this. This is one good one too. Uh, picking the right underline. Oh, sorry, picking the right environment. I didn't go to that. Picking the right environment. We're Normally I talk about you guys, we want above 50 IV for selling option premium. This is the short call butterfly. We will be collecting a premium for it. But one thing when the volatility gets really high in this particular underlying, it doesn't work out very well. So what we're looking for here is somewhere in that gray area when we're building other strategies, whether we're buying option premium or selling option premium, uh, we're in that gray area. So this is a 15 to a 30-ish IV percent. The reason why we can't go too high with this, it makes our wings really wide. And if we go too low with the implied volatility, we can't get a collection to make it worth our while. And I'll go through some steps and I'll show you how that won't work out. But so we start with an IV percent of around 15 or 30 in a particular underlying that we believe is going to have a big market move uh, relatively soon. Picking the right underlying. This simply goes to trying to discern whether or not we are going to trade this particular underlying. And what I go with is a stock that's under 50. Let's look at uh, Kellogg. Uh, and I want to look at a little bit longer out, about 35 days to expiration for this rule. Any stock under $100, we kind of look at these bid offers uh, at around 35 days to expiration. And the bid offer should be inside of 10 cents. It's after the market closed. This is a little bit wider, but generally speaking, we will see these uh, around 10 cents for Kellogg uh, on most occasion. A stock that's over $100, let's look at Max, MasterCard. The rule here is for picking the right uh, underlying, move the decimal three ticks to the left on stocks over $100. So this should be about 19, 20 cents wide. And as you can see, MasterCard is inside of that. So that would be an underlying we would be able to trade in options. You know, if it's a thousand dollar stock, you move it three ticks to the left, you get a dollar wide bid ask. OK, so those are the rules, especially for we are newer traders. Stick with this rule. The years down the road when you started figuring out where the pricing should be, um, then you can go and buffer that a little bit. All right. But I'll tell you, all my stocks over here, I'd say probably 90 5% of these at least are all going to meet this rule. That's when, when they meet that rule, I throw them over here. Kellogg tightens up for its earnings, and that's usually when I trade Kellogg. So, um, But having said that, bid offer, stock under $100, 10 cents wide right here. Over $100, we just move the decimal three ticks to the left, and that's how wide it should be. Everybody got that? That's a pretty simple concept, right? So we start out with an environment environment where we're 15 to 30 percent underlying has 10 cents wide or over a hundred dollar stock we move the decimal right the right duration you know we want time for this to be right we need a big move and usually it's going to be you know it could be sometimes close to a 10 percent move during the days that we're in this so we want to kind of shoot for outside of 35 days you know, we're at 36 days to expiration right now. Tomorrow will be 35 days, but you go further out, it's kind of difficult uh, to get a 45 day expiration. You can do weeklies, but make sure that that monthly, just before the weeklies you're going to be trading, meets that rule of the right underlying. Because if these are wide in the monthlies, if your bid offer is wide in the monthlies, the bid offer in the weeklies is going to be even wider. All right. Picking the right duration, we want about 35 days to expiration. That's where we start discerning whether or not, you know, the uh, time frame is right for this. And we're looking somewhere around 35 days. 45 days is really the sweet spot. We're not going to hit that in this webinar, but I found a few that I think we can do with 35 days expiration. All right, good. I see some people are starting to fill in. They got the uh, late reminder 
with the correct uh, uh, link, right? All right, so uh, I see some people are blowing me up on the uh, questions box. All right, picking the right strike. Picking the right strikes here, we got, uh, we need to start at around the at the money. I know a lot of people will say, hey, you, you can do the uh, short call money or short call butterfly way out here. I don't do that. I go to close to at the money on the ones I'm buying and then sell uh, relatively close. I want my wings as tight as they can be, but here are some rules that we need to follow for picking the right strikes. So you might want to get a pencil and paper on this. Uh, in a sense, we're looking for the stock. So this is a $200 stock, 10%. So a $200 stock, I'm going to need to have my wings about $20 wide. $50 stock, it's going to be about, you know, uh, you know, $5 wide. Okay. $100 stock is going to be about uh, $10 wide. Okay. So you can kind of go with that from there. Usually around the $50, if they're $5 wide, if it's $5 wide, we need to collect 50% the width of the strikes. All right. $5 wide, we collect $250. $10 wide, we need to collect $10. $7.50 wide, we need to collect, what is that? Seven or $3.75. Okay. So keep that in mind. We need to collect 50% at least the width of the strikes. Now that is the rub with this strategy. And believe me, it, that's why it doesn't work out uh, every time, all right? There's gonna be several occasions where it will, but there's gonna be a lot of occasions where it won't. If it doesn't work out, go with a different strategy. You know, it's got low implied volatility. You could do like a long straddle or something like that uh, to take advantage of that outpaced expected move. But in this one, we're looking for 50% the width of the strikes and about that 10% uh, of this underlying is where we're gonna start with building our wings, okay? Just to give you some foundation as to where we start with this strategy, looking to build this out in order to meet all of our objectives, okay? And knowing our exit strategy before entering the trade, this is really important. I not only write down the trades I do on the day that I did it, the price that I did it at, I also write down why I did it, you know, MasterCard, I expected an outpaced move. Why? Well, I, I thought that, you know, if the interest rates go up, they're going to do well. But, you know, Fed might hold off for the rest of the year, which is going to hurt their earnings. So, you know, things like that are the processes you guys need to go through when you're deciding whether or not you're going to trade a stock. And, you know, I had a buddy the other day was like, you know, can you uh, can you start giving me some stocks to uh, trade? And I'm like, dude, you know about as much of the stock market as I do. This guy is brilliant with uh, economic data and really digging into the companies. And I was like, dude, go with your gut. And that's what I need to tell you guys. Go with your gut and write it down. What was what got me into it? Why did I do it? And write where your exit is because you are more likely to stick to that exit strategy if it's written down. If you have it up in your head, you will not be as likely to be mechanical and get out. You're gonna to wanna to squeeze a little bit, all right? Don't do that, especially in the beginning as a new trader. Get out with the rules, and with this rule, we are looking to get out at about a 30% decrease in that collection. So if we collected $2.50 uh, on that particular strategy, right, we're gonna be looking to get out when we've made about 65 cents. Is that right? If it's a, if we have a $5 wide, let's say, and we collected $2 and 50 cents and we want to get out when this underlying is trading at a 30% discount to where we sold it. So at a dollar 75 would be where we'd want to get out, which would be, you know, a 75 cent winner. Now, I don't ride these things out to the end of the day, you guys. There's too much stuff that can happen. I would rather take my little jabs all day long and wear down the opponent or swing for singles and doubles and make sure I'm on base to get ahead in the game, right? I'm not swinging for home runs. Home run swingers usually strike out more than they get hits, all right? So I would rather be on base and have a high on-base percentage. 
So that's why I go at it. If I'm always on base, I know I can always score, right? You can't always score if you're swinging for home runs. A lot of times you're going to strike out. So go for the bases, all right? Get on base. Land those little jabs and punches, okay? So we're looking for a 30% decrease in the commission we originally collected, all right? You can try and squeeze it out a little bit more, but I've, I've noticed that things start going awry uh, if you wait too long. All right, your max profit. Anytime you're collecting your credit, that is always the premium we received. Okay, the max profit is always the premium we received. Our max loss, basically, you can calculate it two different ways, but the easiest, way, it's the width. It's the wings to the base. You know, it could be the in the money to the out the money, but I didn't want to give you a negative number if you punch this all in. But out of the money call minus the at the money call minus the premium received is our max loss. So what I'm talking about here, you guys, is we're trying to collect 50% the width of the strikes, right? So if it's $5 wide, I collected $2.50. What's my max loss? $2.50, right? So that's we want to make it where we can risk one to make one with this strategy. Because it's a lower probability strategy, we need to collect more premium, right? If you have a high probability strategy, that's when you can kind of accept a smaller premium. That's why it's super important with the short call butterfly. It is a low probability strategy. And if you collect a very small premium, like a quarter the width of this, uh, the legs, then you are going to be setting yourself up for a world of hurt going forward because you've risked so much more than what you're willing to make on a very low probability strategy, okay? High probability strategies, we collect less. Low probability strategies, we need to collect more, okay? All right, because we have two wings on this particular strategy, we have two break-evens, right? Because the market can go up and it can go down, but it can't go in both directions at the same time. So we have a break even for both sides. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which one it's going after, but that's the one where we're looking to go for. All right. So a break even. Uh, Two dollars or sorry, the uh, the at the money call minus the net premium received. So or the out of money, out of the money call minus the net premium received, or the in the money call plus the net premium received is where our break evens are going to be. And I'm going to show you this on a uh, on the analyze tab, hopefully, if it works today. But I'll try to pull all that stuff up for you here shortly. So this is the time of the webinar. You know, like I said, when you got questions, throw it out in the questions box. And this part right now. I throw it out to you guys because I, I think you guys are going to learn more if we go through some stocks that you guys throw out there and then I run them over to the platform and we just go through and see, hey, does this strategy work for this particular underlying you guys are throwing out there? All right. First one off, um, I got, what is that? Uh, Netflix. Let's look at Netflix. So Netflix just had earnings. That's another thing. I don't like to do this strategy around earnings because believe it or not they have uh this these wings will very likely be outside of even what the market maker move is expected to be so like for nvidia let's just look at because they are having earnings right now basically but you can see nvidia uh the market maker move is usually right here if you want to figure out a there's different ways to figure that out and i've done earnings uh webinars that specifically go into details on this but with high implied volatility we would not be able to have our wings inside of $14 up or $14 down so stay away from earnings with this strategy uh, I have several earnings trades for this particular one so um, Netflix was one so Netflix let's check out Netflix real quick um, so what we want to do is we want to start to one of the ones that's closest at the money. It's trading two dollars and thirty, or sorry, three hundred dollars and thirty cents. So this is going to be the one we're looking at. Remember, this is the one we're buying two of. The way to build this out, you guys, is to hold down the control button. Yes, you can go up here, do the drop down. Oops, sorry, 
do the drop down, find butterfly, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, they don't follow my rules. They usually just go one strike either direction and that's your butterfly. Don't do that. Follow my rules. This is a $300 stock. So we might have to go like close to $30 wide maybe on this, but I'm not going to want it to be that wide. I'm going to go about half of that. So about, uh, or 10% of that. So I'm going to go about half of that, about 5% wide just to start building it out. I don't like to go that wide. Um, so the 330 stock, I'm going to buy twice, hold down the control button that doubles it up. Um, you can see whenever I hold down the control button, all these numbers come up for future reference. So uh, I'm going to go $15 down to uh, sell the 315 calls and sell those one time. And then uh, $15 up from the 30s is the 45s. And I'm going to sell those one time. Okay. So uh, did I do that right? Uh, nope. That's $20 wide. So I need to change these to the 15 um, 15, right? So the 15, 30, 45. So we've got $15 wide spread here. Did I do that right? $2 and 98 cents for a $15 wide spread. Who wants to risk $2 and who wants to risk $3 or sorry, who wants to risk $13, $12 and, and have the reward be $3. Does that seem like a good risk reward for being right here at the money? And for a $15 move in Netflix in the next 35 days, I, I'm i going to run. <laughs> I'm going to run away from this one for you guys. Uh, so that would not work. So this is an example. It's got the market inside of everything else fits, right? It's got that implied volatility percent, which is 25 and I'm going to show you how to figure out the implied volatility percent in just a second. We've got $15 wides. Look at the bid ask. Just make sure those are really not really wide. And it's giving me a funky number, but it's a $300 stock. And these are in well inside of 30 cents wide. That makes that rule work, right? Um, the duration's right. 36 days. That's outside of our 35 days to expiration. But this premium is not working for us. So I'm going to move along on that one. As a matter of fact, you know, you got a $15 move here, um, you know, buying the at the monies. If you wanted to do the straddle instead and you did that, you know, that's pretty expensive. Um, you're going to have to have more of a, a move than what I showed you even in with the butterfly. But stay away from this butterfly on that one because that is not a good risk reward. Um, somebody, uh, I think that's, um, American express, right? All right. So let's look at American express. American express has a round of 30 implied volatility percent, right? That's the right environment. 15 to 30 is what we're looking for. Uh, the next thing we look at, is it the right underlying APX American, um, uh, express is a hundred dollar stock. So 10 cents wide. We are four cents wide here, five cents wide there. So we're inside of that rule, right? We're meeting that days to expiration. We're meeting the 10 cents bid ask. So let's look at the strikes. It's trading around 101, the closest to at the money. I'm going to go with the $100 stock, uh, $100 strike. Make this easy. So buy two of those. We've got the 20 there for right now. And then um, I'm going to look at what I, so 10% down would be $10 down. $100 stock is around $10 usually to make this rule fit. So I'm going to go to the 90s and I'm going to sell, make sure I got the 90s, sell one of those and then sell the 90s to the 110s, sell the 110s once. And we've got uh, $10 wide, $10 wide, and we're collecting almost $6. So see how that, I mean, those two stocks that I just showed you were, you know, relatively close in IV percent, but not all of them are going to work. So you're going to have to walk through this. This is a good example of one that does work. Um, uh, one thing to note also around earnings, or sorry, around a dividend. Remember, 
on the ex dividend date, the stock is supposed to drop by the amount of the dividend. It doesn't always work. It, it, I, I don't have a percent of times that it does work, but it doesn't always work, uh, especially with like Apple. Apple will jump the amount of the dividend sometimes on uh, ex dividend date. So it doesn't always follow that rule, but be aware of that dividend, knowing that, you know, if this trade is looking pretty good, but the ex dividend is going to make the stock drop significantly on you, you might want to cover that the day before that ex dividend date, take your profits, whatever they are and walk away. Um, but this would be a good one right here. So uh, we're risking less than we are uh, willing or able to receive. So let's just try and uh, do the analyze tab. And this is our risk reward. You can see our re risk is $400. Our reward is $600. We just have to make that move. Now, let's just round this up to $6 so I can do the math real quick in my head later on in the day. Uh, so $6. So what did we talk about? Our break even on the downside, we need to take those 90 calls, add the credit to us. So our break even is right around 96 to the downside and then to the upside, $6 is 106, or sorry, uh, we take the out of the money strike and subtract the $6 and we get 104. Now that's at expiration, you guys. This can happen sooner. The break even can happen sooner. This is just at expiration based on all the theta decay and everything else coming out that you would need to be above or uh, below those two areas, okay? And then it becomes profit until uh, basically expiration. Um, can you recap the entry uh, conditions criteria one more time before wrapping up? Thanks. Yes, I will, Ethan. So this is a great example of risking a lot less for reward on a very low pro uh, or on a probability strategy or a strategy that has a probability of about 50 50 maybe slightly better than that um it is better than that if you cover early so in this let's just go through this one last time uh six dollars times 0.7 because we're looking for a 30% reduction. So this is 70% of that value, which just tells us where we want to get out. And when it's trading $4.20, that's where I would look to get out. Okay. All right. So let's go through one more example real quick. Uh, um, IBM. Uh, so let's go over to IBM real quick. So IBM, $100 stock, got a 19 delta, that's within, or a 19 implied volatility percent, which is within my rules. If you don't have implied volatility percent, this is how you figure it out. You have a division problem. In the numerator, you take where the current Implied volatility percent or implied volatility is right now, let's call it 18, 17.9 is uh, 18. So you take 18 minus the low, which is 14. So that's four. So in the numerator, we have four. And you divide that by the sum of the high, which is 33, 34, 34 minus 14 is 20, so four divided by 20 is around 20%, right? So that's where you get this. You know, I rounded everything off, so my numbers are off, their numbers are probably dead on. All right, so implied volatility percent is in line. So remember, this is the steps we're gonna go, oops. These are the steps we're gonna go through. Right environment, we've got that. The right underlying, do we have that? Right underlying means the bid offer needs to be 10 cents wide on a stock under $100. Or if it's over $100, we just move the decimal three ticks to the left. That's, let's call it 15 cents. Uh, you can see IBM well within that rule. So that fits that rule of picking the right underlying. The next one is the right duration. We were talking about 45 days is the sweet spot, but 
outside of 35 days works. Uh, we're right there in that wheelhouse. We're good to go. We got all green lights so far. Pick the strikes. We need to collect 50% width of the wings. And I talked to you about, you know, you go about 10% of what this is. So $15 wide is kind of where you start. I don't like, um, I don't know if I'm going to go that wide. So I always look at how wide do I think it needs to be? And usually that's the extreme. And then start working your way inside. We know we want to pick the closest to where the underlying is currently trading, which is the 145 handle. So we're going to buy two of those, hold down the control button. We get two of those. And then I'm going to go $10 just to see. The rule says 15, but I'm going to just, I want my wings tighter. So I'm going to give this one a shot. Just see if it works out. Always go a little tighter first and then widen it out. Okay. Everybody get that? Always go tighter. And then if that doesn't work, go a little wider. Ten, $10 wide, $5.35. We only needed to collect $5 to fit my rule. This is all gravy when we go over that. So that fits the rule there as well. We're going to get out when the underlying depreciates by 30% or when the, sorry, when the premium depreciates by 30% and we got $5 and 35 cents. And I write all this stuff down. I wrote down my strikes on paper. I write down what I paid for it. I, I wrote down, I was doing IBM. Here's my th theory on IBM. And if you guys have been watching the daily market commentaries, you understand my frustration. Um, IBM, they've been going from a service oriented business to a uh, cloud-based business and they've made their money on building computers and servicing all that stuff and they're getting away from it they're building cloud services well the service sector has high cost low margin on the other hand the cloud services is hugely profitable and very low maintenance costs okay that has higher margin in it They've been beating on all these earnings on the, well, on the cloud side of it and losing or, and they're not increasing as much on the service side. Well, Wall Street doesn't like it. I think it's brilliant. They have been getting beat up on it. Well, if Wall Street continues to beat up on IBM, they're going to go down based on this cloud thing. And once they realize, and or if they do realize this is a good, uh, path for IBM, then it's going to spike. So those are my two theories with IBM. I also really like it when stocks do this and they start really winding tight for a little while and have all these gyrations in a sense, but they haven't gone anywhere because that means it's really going to break out pretty soon. Um, so I like it. Uh, I compare it to those old balsa wood airplanes where you take the propeller and you wind up the rubber band as tight as you can well the tighter longer you wind that rubber band the tighter it gets right and i believe it's called kinetic energy that's stored when it's idle i'm maybe off on that but uh it's just the word that came to mind right now so you keep winding that up and what happens if you wind it up five times it spins kind of slow right it doesn't really do anything but you went wind it up 50 times and you let go of that thing you can hear that thing humming that's what happens the same in stocks. You get that long wind up and then boom, it'll it'll spring out. It doesn't always just have to happen on earnings, but you will see that stuff happen. Um, like it didn't happen on this earnings, but afterwards, you know, you kind of got that snap. So that's kind of like what we're looking for with this. Uh, it's starting to wind up here. I think it's going to snap in one direction or the other. I'm leaning towards the upside, but Wall Street's hating on IBM and Ever since Berkshire Hathaway sold all their shares up here, uh, it's been nothing but downside. But anyway, I like it for those reasons. We can look at it on the Analyze tab as well. And you can see it is a limited risk strategy. You can't lose any more than this if it pinned right on the market. So it is appropriate for an IRA. So you can collect premium in an IRA, which I love to do. And it's defined risk, so it meets all those rules. That's good on that one. Um, there was something I was going to mention. 
uh, that about this that uh, just let me make sure I covered all my notes. Um, I think I did. Does anybody else have any other questions that I answer yours, Ethan, on that one? On going through all those steps. So that's what we're gonna do. You know, uh, start out. You know, wings maybe ten percent, and then go in one option to either side to start that for building it out. Okay. So that's how we set up a short call butterfly. Now, you guys, I know you can go and figure this stuff out online. It's all over the place. And I've even seen guys do like short call butterflies out of the market, away from where the underlying is trading and waiting for it to go to that spot and pin it. I have other strategies for that that are higher probability than this one uh, for a market to move to a certain location. This strategy in my eyes only really works when you can set it up like this. You go at the money and you're expecting a large move and people online are not going to give you that kind of information. And the only way that you know that kind of information is when you've traded on the floor and you've actually sold one of these butterflies out of the money because you had to. Market makers have to trade despite the fact that we don't want to trade some of those. So, you know, you guys get to learn from my years of angst when I'd have to make a market and I had to do a trade that I didn't really like because I was a market maker and learned very quickly which ones did not work in certain situations. And I've created this whole option uh, classes or how to build these options around all of those mistakes that I've made. So you don't have to, all right? So having said that, basically, I mean, don't you guys think you'd be better off traders if you traded with higher probabilities? I mean, think about it. If you think about high probabilities, here's what I want you to picture in your head. High probabilities. What's the best way to think about that? Just think about the Vegas Strip. Look at all those lights, all those big buildings, all right? That is what high probability builds. Casinos only have the probabilities in their favor. The best probability in the favor of the um pedestrian that walks in off the street into a casino is the coin toss of a football game. It's the only time you can get 50-50. That's your best odds. Here, I teach how to play with probabilities 85% in your favor, which is like what Vegas does. Wouldn't you rather be the house? Yes. All right. So at the end of the day, if you've learned anything at all, you guys should really be trading with the rest of this knowledge as well. Uh, and if you've enjoyed my instruction, especially if you went on my regulars, you guys, you guys should take a shot at this for 36 bucks. It's a great deal. You get some fun stuff, a history of options, terminology, cost of options, how to generate income with your options, protecting your portfolio. Uh, this is in, sorry, this is in the uh, chat window. I put a link to this in the chat window. If you guys are watching this on tape play because you got uh, the wrong link that we sent out earlier, then please pause it type this into your URL. But for you guys that were participating in this, the easiest way to do is click on that link. It gives you a direct go to it. But the bottom line is, you guys, the best way to become a better trader is to constantly learn. And you've obviously done that by taking advantage of this webinar. Uh, but wouldn't you say that knowing just how to create this short call butterfly isn't enough to get ahead? I mean, you need to know what the probabilities are. You need to know where the right location is. You need to know what type of collection of credit you need to have in order to be successful, all right? And even just trading on technical analysis and stuff like that isn't enough to create consistent winners. It's having the probabilities in your favor. And basically what I mean by being a technical trader, or just even technically building a strategy even is, the best way to get ahead is to trade with my high probabilities of success uh, and to become more mechanical. You know, that's another thing. Like I talked about writing this stuff down, those simple little steps in your daily process 
will make you more mechanical. And that's how I teach is how to be mechanical. Even in my daily market commentaries, I stress that every single day. And when you guys watch my uh, daily market commentaries, I tell you when I'm getting out and or when I'm getting in and when I'm getting out. And I talk about how much of a collection I collected in the beginning and you know, basically getting out of 50% of my max profit on some spreads on this one, it would be 30%. I'm gonna stick to those rules because I want to be mechanical. Take your wins and run. It will increase your probabilities over the long term of success, all right? All right, so when you guys are trading with the right tools in the right situations, you guys are gonna be more, more productive state of mind, which will allow you to put on more strategies, which creates more opportunities. And it just snowballs because then you're more confident. You start seeing when you start putting on more and more and more that the probabilities really are in your favor. Yeah, you're going to get stung every once in a while. And you might get stung on the very first time you trade one of these options and be like, Wolf, man, you told me the probabilities were in my favor. Well, they are. The probabilities may have beaten you the very first time, but just know that that means that the next several times the probabilities are in your favor and that will ultimately make up for that one that dinged you. So stay mechanical, stay the course. You know that you're gonna get stung every once in a while, but the reward of getting that honey is much more uh, rewarding than that one sting you got every once in a while, right? So we're offering this trial today. Guys, I suggest you really take advantage of it. Click on that link in the chat window for 36 bucks. 36 bucks protecting your portfolio against rising interest rates. You are going to save this. I don't care how small your portfolio is. $36 is going to be made up in just protecting your portfolio. Most people, you guys, really neglect their bond portfolio. That's just kind of the steady money that keeps coming in. But as you will see, as interest rates rise, that value of that portfolio will go down. Yes, you can hold it till 30 years and get out then, but nobody does it. They always try and sell the bond and chase the coupon for the higher coupon. I can get 5% now. Well, you can't sell your bond and make up for that coupon because the traders know they're buying that bond below the value of being able to make it up. You can't chase, you can never chase coupon, higher coupon. The only way that you can deal with your bond portfolio right now is to follow these uh, couple of different webinars that I've done on it. And there's probably well over 10 hours of information in these that you guys uh, can benefit from. And knowing the history of options, you can walk up to a veteran options trader and drop this on them. And the guy's going to look at you like, where did you learn that? It's, it's actually a pretty fun little uh, thing to have conversations with people, especially when they're talking options and they know all all the options. And you can drop that little note on them and they'll be like, okay. Uh, anyway, so if you've learned anything at all from me, basically take advantage of that. All right, guys. Uh, one last thing I just want to say is thank you very much for attending this. Later webinars, I'm going to be drilling, drilling down on different option components when and where I find them. This is also the link you guys can pause and type it in. I'm sorry, it's not a hot link. You can't Click on that. You're just going to have to pot, uh, do it old school and punch it in. Thanks for watching, you guys. You can contact us 310-598-6677 or email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. All right. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, get the daily market commentaries. Just reach out to us at either the phone number or the trading and you can get set up with that as well, you guys. So you don't even, uh, we got a lot of different things you can do. And those daily market commentaries, you guys, I, seriously, I talk about every trade I do every single day. All right, so take advantage of that. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for attending. And if you can't take that, take it easy.